Hello and welcome to the 20th video in this series of videos programming chess engine in C. So in this video we're going to introduce two last little things before we sort of hit a milestone point. The first thing is we're going to complete this update lists material function because what I haven't done in here is actually got anything to set the bits for the pawns. Um, to get this video short as in the last few it's going to be a little bit of copying and pasting in here code I've already written because I want to complete two things in this video. So in this section here all I've got very simply is if the piece that we're looking at inside this piece loop here is a white pawn then set the bit on the bit board in the position for white pawns and set the bit on the bit board that's there for both pawns so both color pawns so all pawns and the one got you in here, which got me when I was practicing this video earlier, is of course you're setting the bit in the 64 indexing format and square at the moment is in the 120 indexing format so you need to convert it inside here. This caught me out when I was actually writing it earlier and I imagine it's going to catch me out many times during the rest of the programming of this engine. And then once you've done the white pawn, you simply say else if the piece is a black pawn, then set the bit on the bit board for black and set the bit on the bit board for both. Now before we move on to the checkboard function, what we can very quickly do in vice.c, I have put in another FEN string here, which if you've downloaded the code, you can simply copy and paste in, or maybe you're just working directly from this code anyway and I've set up our board just with this FEN I removed the setup code for FENs 1, 2 and 3 from the previous video and I've put in quickly some code here which is very self-explanatory which is simply printing the board and then printing the bit boards for white pawns, black pawns and all of the pawns together and I'm going to very quickly make this and actually run it just to check that the pawns look okay in this position now it just so happens I know this position quite well and I can already, because it you'll see later on we're coming to test the move generator, this is one of the trickiest positions to use which always catches, well catches most of the move generation and move and undo, make move and undo move bugs. Um, anyway, so I know this position quite well but that's fine for the white pawns, that's also how the black pawns look and the combined bit board, yes, looks more or less alright. So we know that we're setting up our bit boards correctly, good. So the next thing to do is we need to implement this checkboard function which I've often been talking about and I'm going to implement it step by step and talk through it as I do it. So it returns an integer type which will be of our constant true or false but it will always return true because the way this function is going to work is it's going to have a load of asserts inside it and these asserts will trigger and fail so the function will never actually return. And the first part of the function is simply setting up a load of variables and they're t underscore which means temporary uh, in, in this function. And basically these are all going to hold information to mirror our position here that we're passing in. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go through the board, what's on the board in the position in POS, and fill up the piece num, the big pieces, the minor pieces, the major pieces, and material. And then at the end of the function we're going to compare whether the values stored in this position are the same as the values that we filled, because they should be. If they're not, we know, that we know there's an error. So I'll do this step by step. Down here I've also declared an array to store the pawn bit boards because we're also going to walk through our pawn bit boards and check that the bits are in the correct places. And now let's have a look step by step. So the first thing we've got here is a loop which loops by piece type, so from white pawn to black king, and then loops by the piece number for each type. So say we've got eight white pawns then all it simply does is the outer loop t pieces white pawn and the inner loop this value here from our position which you'll have understood from the previous video when we set up the piece lists will be 8 so we'll have 0 to 7 in our loop basically we then from our piece list get the square for that piece and then we simply assert that if our piece list says there is for example a white pawn on this square 
then our pieces array inside the position should have a white pawn on it so that they should both be the same. If they're not, then we know that the piece list isn't aligned with what's on the board array. That should be fairly simple to understand. So the next thing we want is we want to increment, go through the board, and I've done it using a square 64 here so we don't do so many loops, and then converted that square 64 into a 120 based index. And then looking at the piece that's on that square, I'm looking, I'm incrementing the number of pieces in our temporary piece number store for that piece type. And then I'm also getting the color of that piece. And then I'm incrementing our big piece, minor pieces, and major pieces, much in the same way as when we up, uh, update our materials and lists in the normal function. And also updating the material value here. Now you may be wondering why is all this worth it when the last function we called when setting up the board was this update list material and we do all of that here anyway so they're not going to be any different. Well that's true when you first set up a position but you'll see later on when we make a move on the board and then make another move everything is updated incrementally. So say we capture a piece we'll then subtract from our material value on the board here we'll subtract the value of the piece that's being captured and then say we've made a sequence of 10 moves and we undo those 10 moves we'll have to also replace and update these values incrementally and that's where things can go wrong if you're not careful which is why we're writing this function so that should be all set fairly self-explanatory that's simply filling up our temporary variables with the appropriate material minor and major pieces and now we're going to have an assert loop and we're going to loop through all piece types and the first thing we're going to do is say that the number of pieces we found on the board and stored inside our temporary piece number array equals for each piece type what our position says for piece number so if they're not equal then we know that something's gone wrong with the piece number array in our position structure the next thing we're going to do is have a look at the pawn bit boards and it's very simple here I'm just taking the pawn count for the white bit board and asserting that that count is equal to what the position says is the number of white pawns we have to make sure that what we have on the bit boards in bit set marries up with what we have in our number of pieces array I do the same for black and then I also do the same for black and white combined saying the count should equal the piece number for black pawns plus the piece number for white pawns again it's pretty simple self-explanatory and then what I'm doing is I'm then going to check the squares for the bit boards. So you remember I talked earlier on in the videos about this pop function, which removes a bit from a bit board and returns a 64-based square index. Well, I'm taking the temporary bit board here for white pawns. I'm popping a bit. And then, because it's a square 64, I'm then getting the 120 base square from that 64 square and just checking that in our pieces array there is a white pawn on that square otherwise the bits that are on our white pawn bit board don't match up with the pieces array in our position and we throw an assert error and this while loop keeps going until there are no bits left because you remember that pop actually removes the bit where the index is returned from the bit board and I do the same for black and I do the same for both with this assert saying there must either be black pawn or a white pawn on the board and then the last bit here I'm going to copy first of all this bit in here these are now just some last sort of sanity checks the material should be the same for white and black the minor major big pieces should be the same for white and black what we found in temporary and in our position and then the side should be the white or black obviously and also and here's an interesting one is the position key should be the same as a freshly generated key now it will be straight after setting up a position but like I said when we have when we make a move we don't at the end of making a move regenerate the entire hash key because that's too many unnecessary computations we simply XOR a piece that we've moved out of the square it's on and into the new square so we incrementally update this key and therefore we need to check here that the key after each move or whenever we call this function is actually correct 
And the last thing we need to do, which I'll copy and paste in, is we need to say that our on percent square is either no square or if it's not no square, it must be a square that if the side to move is white is on the sixth rank or if the side to move is black then the on percent square must be on the third rank because imagine if side to move is white then that means black has just moved a pawn forward two squares if the on percent square is not no square which means the on percent square must be because black has just moved on the sixth rank and the opposite way rank three for white and last but not least for these king square arrays I'm just checking that the king the square that these give out for white and black on the pieces array are indeed the corresponding white and black kings and assuming we get to the end of there we return true so the way we use this checkboard function we first need to put it in defs.h although I've got a feeling it's already in defs.h it is because I never removed it so extern into checkboard in this way and the way we then use this function is simply once we've set up our board we can simply call assert and checkboard in this way and board and now we can save this and make and run and you'll see that it hasn't actually failed at all so no, no assert has been failed but let's actually force a fail shall we so let's do something like let's reduce the number of pawns in the piece numbers in the position so if I go board piece num white pawn minus minus and now call an assert checkboard and I'll call I'll just make a a new a bit of a gap here so we can see what we're doing uh, called it forced asserts put a new line and now you'll see that it should trigger an assert because we've got the wrong piece count on the board so if I now go to make and run and you can see here now under forced asserts so we've already reached there so the first assert was okay it's now saying that the piece num is not equal that we added up when we went through our checkboard function is not equal to the piece num in the position so you can see it's triggered the assert and just to give you one more example there, I could, for example, with the POS key, XOR out the side key in this way. I think it's called side key like that. Just double check. Nope, with capitals. Very good. And this means that the position key is now incorrect. So if I make this and run again, and now you can see that the generate position key is not the same. So it's realized that there's something wrong with the hash key. So in this way you can see that this checkboard function will be extremely useful for the rest of the program in actually checking the integrity of our board structure because if anything is wrong in that structure once once we get searching and the program is actually playing a game the program will be searching around 500,000 positions per second when it's thinking in the game in all sorts of branches of the search tree and if any one of these bits of information on the board, so where the pieces are, the piece list, the hash key, or the position key, the casting commission, the ampersand square, anything like this is incorrect or doesn't add up, it will cause bugs and cause the search to be incorrect. In some cases it might we might not notice and it still might play well. In other cases it might just simply crash with false indexing and in arrays and things like that. So although it seems a bit of a pain to have to write such a function out like this, it's actually now that we've got it is really useful and we can simply put this line assert checkboard board anywhere inside our program and be safe in the knowledge that all of our variables that we have inside our board structure are correct okay that's it for this video thanks very much for listening the next video won't contain any code I'm going to do a two three minute quick description of where we are and what the next stages are in building the chess program because things are starting to get interesting now Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.